It's your girl Ro in the building and I'm here to welcome you to my YouTube channel. So in this video, I will be sharing with you how I melt, color, and flavor chocolate. I will also be sharing with you how I clean my apples to dip in chocolate. But before we get started, we're gonna get right into these supplies, so let's go. Here I have some Merkins chocolate. I'm gonna be using two different types of apples, Granny Smith and Gala apples. I'm also gonna be using an oil flavoring. Here I have a one ounce bottle and the smaller bottles are one dram. And of course, my favorite food coloring. Some apple sticks and of course, some paper decorated straws. And here I have some Merkins chocolate with the Paramount crystals on top. And we're gonna get into that, but let's get into these apples. So here I have some Granny Smith apples and some Gala apples. I chose to demonstrate in this video with two different types of apples to show you that it doesn't matter the type of apples you have, but you wanna make sure you check them before dipping in chocolate. I do prefer Granny Smith, but I also want to show you, you can dip with other apples in chocolate as well. So make sure you destem them, check for any cuts, dents, or any soft spots in the apple. My cleaning process is simple. Just wash with a simple rinse and dry and make sure you take your paper towel and clean in these areas as you see here dirt is in the core and the bottom of your apples now i'm using some straws and apple sticks these apple sticks are made for your decorated straws and the length and the width of these straws are 6.5 by 5.0 this will allow your decorated straw to fit over these particular sticks, which is highly requested. So I'm sharing with you in this video how important it is about these sticks and those that are requesting to have them. So as I insert my sticks, I insert just halfway. And the reason being is to allow the stick to go in properly and not all the way through your apple. So when you insert your stick, you don't wanna insert all the way down. If so, once you apply your straw over your stick, then you press far, if you press too much down into your apple, it's gonna go through as you see demonstrated. And I'm gonna show you in a few seconds. So piercing your stick into your apple, you wanna go halfway, just enough. Once you apply that straw, that straw is also gonna push down the stick as well. So that's why it's important that you go halfway, check it to make sure it don't come out, and then you got your perfectly inserted stick and straw. Now here with this apple, I'm gonna show you how I pressed all the way down to the bottom base of the apple and now I'm inserting the straw and it's gonna show you how it pierced right through the apple. And this is not, this is something you do not want to do. So you see here, that is the tip of that straw, of that stick that has came through the apple. Now you guys, you can pull this out, but you may have some bubbles. So just be sure to insert halfway, allow that straw to go over the stick. Once you press in firmly, then you will know that that straw won't go all the way through. All right, so once your stick is inserted, there may be a little bit of juice that comes back up after, you, after the piercing. Take the paper towel, wipe around the top, 
and you're good to go. Now let's get into this chocolate. Here I have Merkins White and Merkins Super White. So on my left is the Super White and on my right is just the white chocolate. I'm gonna show you what's the difference. So I love to use a 16 ounce glass container and this is a Perix glass that I use all the time for melting my chocolate. Now normally you get about a 16 ounce bag of Merkins chocolate. If you get any bigger bag, I like to measure out my chocolate because it helps with my melting process. All right, so to a 16 ounce bag of chocolate, I use these Paramount Crystals and I use two tablespoons to a 16 ounce cup or bag of chocolate. These Paramount Crystals are flakes, hydrated flakes, um, that melts into oil substance. So I always add two tablespoons to a 16 ounce cup. So here I have to my right and to my left, Merkins Super White. White. So this is the white. And we're melting this for 30 seconds using a silicone spoon. We want to maneuver around the chocolate. The reason to do um, this process is because you do not want to melt and reheat and reheat and then you're gonna have some burned chocolate in the center um, while you're going through the process. So this is why it's important to maneuver around the chocolate after each interval. So this is the second interval. And as you see here, um, maneuvering around the chocolate, utilizing the heat from the glass cup. This helps with the pro uh, melting process. So I'm going to put this back into the microwave for another 15 seconds interval. All right, so after my third interval, this was heated up for 15 seconds. And now I'm mixing around the chocolate and utilizing the heat from my cup to help with melting some of the melts that are still in this cup that you see here. So it's important to heat your chocolate, your chocolate melts in small intervals. All right, Merkin's chocolate is a candy melt. It is not real chocolate. So you wanna make sure you do know the difference in the product that you use. And in this video, I am using Merkin's chocolate candy melts. So as you see here, this is completely melted and I'm ready to color and flavor as well. And this is the Merkin's Super White. So here is the Merkin's White, which has like a tan tone to it. See the difference? And this has like a little ivory tan color to the white. But I'm gonna show you something that's really unique that the chocolate chameleon coloring has, which is by Artisan Accent and um, the Sweet Color Lab. Yes, they have a white. So first, before I demonstrate the coloring process, I'm going to dip a few strawberries to show you the difference. This is the white. And now we're gonna dip in the super white. Now, I know you guys are gonna ask in the comments below, what is my preference? And super white is my preference. That is always my go-to. So I have the two strawberries here. We're gonna let them sit to dry. And we're gonna keep mixing our chocolate. 
and I'm just gonna show you the difference in the two. One is white and the other is like a off-white. So now, if you ever come into a situation where you had chocolate and you really wanted to get them white, well, Artist Accents and the Sweet Color Lab have created this white food coloring made for chocolate. It is an oil-based flavor, uh, food coloring. And if you ever have used the chocolate that comes from Walmart, it is the almond bark that has that ivory look to it. Well, guess what, you guys? Artist Accent has created and the Sweet Color Lab has created this white. And as you see, I'm adding just amounts um, to this chocolate adding more of the coloring does not change the taste and it just and it does not change or thicken the texture of the chocolate it actually helps thin out the chocolate a little bit and as you see here i added uh, a nice amount of white and now i'm going to show you how beautiful it turned out So taking a strawberry and dipping into the colored white chocolate, you see it is just like the super white. And I'll show you the difference in a few. Now I'm dipping into the actual super white uncolored chocolate melts. And as you see, the chocolate is still nice and melted. And now we're gonna start coloring. So this is the chocolate chameleon green. And I'm just gonna squeeze in uh, amount and I like to add in two teaspoons of coloring food coloring to a 16 ounce cup of chocolate to get my desired color this is my process every time I melt chocolate if you want to add more it's okay to add more the only thing it will do is thin out your chocolate a little bit more now, if for any reason your chocolate begins to thicken, just place it back into the microwave for 10 to 15 seconds until it gets to its desired amount of thinning out your chocolate. And I'm just showing you here the colored chocolate that was colored with white and me applying another color on top of another color. And so as you see here, it colors well. Now, just want to add, you do not have to add the white to achieve the color, all right? So I'm just showing you that you can still color on top of the white. Now, I always use a separate bowl um, to help with dipping my apples. It's not necessary but it's just my preference to use another bowl because if I have larger apples, I dip inside that bowl. Now here's a tip that you need to know. After the melting process of your chocolate, you want to make sure you let that chocolate in that glass container or cup sit for at least five minutes. You want the temperature to come down before you dip your apples. And I'm gonna show you why in this video. So here you see me dip my apple. And 
and I'm going to dip the gala apple to show you that it's not going to make a difference uh, if you use a different type of apple. And this is for dipping in chocolate. So the only apples that I do not like to dip in chocolate are the red delicious apple. And as you see here, if you get any bubbles, get a toothpick and quickly pop them before your chocolate hardens. I let them sit to air dry at room temperature. And now I'm gonna show you the flavoring process. Again, I have a one ounce and this is a one dram. That's a one ounce, the tropical punch. And then the smaller bottle is a one dram. So when I flavor my chocolate, I always add one to two drops. You do not need to add a bunch of flavoring to your chocolate. If you do, your chocolate will seize, become thick, and hard to manage. And it will also cause your your desserts, once you have dipped them, um, it will cause elephant skin. So the flavor is very strong. So it's important for you to know that one to two drops is fine when adding to your chocolate. You will taste the flavor. It's very potent. So don't worry about adding a bunch of flavor. Trust me. If you ever added too much flavor to your chocolate and wonder why it thickened or you was having trouble with elephant skin, it's probably because you added too much flavor. So leave a comment in the comment section below letting me know if you had that problem before. All right. But I'm going to show you also what elephant skin is. So here I'm uh, um, adding the extra um, chocolate to the bowl and I'm just mixing it in. And I'm also going to heat this back up. And I just did, as you see, it's a little thinned out and I heated it back up for 10 seconds. Now I'm gonna take an apple and dip right away. I want to show you what happens when you dip right away after you have melted your chocolate. All right. So that means after melting and you begin to dip your desserts, whether it's apples or strawberries and you dip right away, you're going to create what is called elephant skin. So I'm showing you the difference here. And now I'm going to wait till these apples dry and show you what happens when you dip too fast. So see here is the elephant skin that everyone talks about. This happens when you just finish melting your chocolate and start dipping right away. This is why I wait for five minutes, at least five minutes before I dip my apples. That's why my apples are so smooth because it's a process and a technique. And again, the chocolate is still hot. It hasn't came down in temperature. And I'm gonna show you again, the elephant skin. This will help prevent the elephant skin. For those that always ask, how do I get my apples so smooth with the chocolate? This is what happens.
you for watching my video and if you have enjoyed this video make sure you comment like and subscribe be sure to hit that notification bell to always let you know and it will remind you when my next video will post and if you enjoyed this video be sure to watch these next videos that you see here listed on my channel it's your girl robot to go and i'll see you in the next video